Today on Nation, we're gonna be talking about winter hustle. So if you are a window cleaner, pressure washer, anybody in the service industry and you wanna maybe pick up a thing or two, stay tuned, watch it all. Hopefully it's better than a cat video, but this is WCR Nation. What's up everybody? Jersey here from WCR Window Cleaner. Dot com and you are here what's up hey how are you if you're new have a look around hopefully you enjoy the podcast uh we've been doing two years of these it's like 120 something podcasts they're all 30 minute plus long so you can go ahead and uh check that out whenever you get a chance um they are awesome if i do say so myself but uh definitely check them out uh, we have lots of episodes to go back and catch up on but i want to be your rep Everything sales related, products, questions, anything in the window cleaning and pressure washing world. My number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell. Give me a call. Shoot me a text, whatever. Put everything in your cart. Shop away all night. And then text me. Yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. At the end of the show, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off, uh, which is super awesome. So stay tuned to that. You can only get that if you call and order through me. I really, all your big orders, little orders, it does not matter. I want to be a rep. But anyway, a couple, couple quick shout outs this morning uh, or today is uh, Adam. What's up, Adam? Drayer, what's going on? Chris Johnson, the man. Uh, and what's up, Tyler with two, a T window cleaning. What's going on, man? Uh, he sent me over an awesome idea for a podcast also. Uh, that I am not doing this week, of course. Um, I'm actually redoing this podcast. We had everything done, and I had a guest, Adam Schrader. You may remember him, uh, the sleeveless finance guy. Um, and uh, it turned out super awful. The audio was super messed up. So I got to re record it. So I'm sorry. But we'll get to that. If you have an idea, shoot me a text to comment down below if you're watching on Facebook, uh, YouTube, sorry. And make sure to give a thumbs up. Anyway, all right. So this week we're talking about the winter hustle. Now, there's a couple of ways you can think about this is that you can go with the business oriented side or the non-business oriented side. It is up to you. Now, maybe you're new in business. You haven't hit the winter yet. Maybe you've been in business a little while, but you need something to kind of get you through winter. Or maybe you live in California and all winter long you brag about how you're busy. Either way. Uh, by the way, don't do that. I'm from Wisconsin originally. I moved to North Carolina just a couple years ago. It's awesome here. The winters are like fake winter. Like if we get into the 20s, like upper 20s, it's whew, like they're thinking about closing school. That's freezing if you didn't know. It's pretty funny. But anyway, I'm from Wisconsin where we hit like negative 50 every year. So it's a little different. But in Wisconsin... After Thanksgiving, you pretty much don't have windows until April of the next year. Like, yes, there's, you know, route and those random ones. You get a nice batch. There's that. There's a lot of things that you can do kind of throughout the winter that constitute as a side hustle. There's close, like I said, close to kind of your core and then there's farther ones away. And we're going to talk about that. If you are set, say you do shut down, you save your money actually. And you're awesome through the winter. You go sit on a beach somewhere or you just like snowmobiling and that's what you do. That's awesome. I'm not telling you that you should do any of this stuff. And I'm not telling you that you uh, shouldn't do any of it. What I'm telling you is just some good ideas. At least what I think they are. There's no wrong way again to do it. It's your business. Do it however you want. But if you're looking for some extra income, sometimes that's nice. I'm going to tell you. You guys kind of like the uh, horror stories. Uh, unfortunately, I do have a lot of them. I've been in business for about 15 years with my own window cleaning business, and now I'm officially not a window cleaner. I sold my business. But in that time, I have had some horrible, horrible time, winter, all of that. When I first started, I uh, did not save properly for winter. It just, I didn't. Um, it was not, it was not, not great right? Winter time has always been kind of a, 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 a crappy time. And I went down bare bones the first year. Second year, oh man, I'm going to do this. I'm going to save. 
I saved enough and didn't make it all the way through before I was like really looking at what bills to like, should I pay? What bills shouldn't I pay? This one's got a grace period. Ooh, I can take that bill and pay that bill, right? So there was a lot of that going on and made it through the second year. Well, year three came along and that was my big growth year. I saved. I got all my money. I saved it. It was awesome, right? Going into spring, it's going to be, yeah, I got money. And then our tax lady, who was absolutely not awesome, she said, um, wow, you guys did really good last year. I said, I know. Thank you. Thank you. And she's like, yeah, yeah. You owe, and she told me the amount. And I can't remember what the amount was, but I remember it was more than I had saved that I owed in taxes. And I went right to the date. Now, April 20th, 15th, whatever it was at that time, um, I paid. And... Um, <laughs> It does not get busy right away. So I literally tapped everything out um, plus some to pay those taxes to just squeak through. I had like a month and I just was praying for season so bad. Those are the horror stories. Those are the ones that make you understand that the winter is coming. You know that little meme with the guy with the sword from, uh, I think that's from uh, Game of Thrones. Probably, sorry. You uh, uh, movie buffs out there will yell at me for that one. Um, but... Um, that's a TV show. Anyway, I've never seen Game of Thrones. Man, I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, that's true. Winter is coming. It is always coming. And I don't like talking about it too early. Well, now I don't have winter, so I'm okay with it. But for you guys and girls out there, I don't want to talk about it too early. But you have to be prepared. And you have to plan something for winter. Now, the biggest thing you can do for all of it, no matter what, is to save. To save and have more than what you need. That's hard, right? Obviously, Let's talk about the dumb, the dumb, easy thing. That's what I'm doing right now. Saving. But say you have a three-month winter, you're going to need thousands of dollars. I mean, save at least 10K for that, you know? And you have to figure out all your expenses, what you have, what maybe your payroll is. You can keep people on doing something. You have to figure all that out because don't think you're going to get the jobs in the winter and get paid right away because remember, there's like a month before sometimes people pay you, especially in the commercial so routes, all that kind of fun stuff. So you have to have the money saved and you have to have more than enough. And here's a great idea is the amount of money that you have saved. Say you come out of winter. Things, man, the light switch, spring is here. That's what we're going to be saying next year. Spring is here. Everything is crazy. You're making a billion dollars and you got all this money in your savings. That's the money you can use then for advertising. Like you have that money to get to be able to use it. Now, don't have to spend it. But if I could, you know, take my money and buy an ATM that gave me money all the time, I do that, right? That's what you're doing when you're advertising. There's no need to spend that money in the winter for advertising because advertising doesn't work in the winter. If you think I'm wrong, comment down below on YouTube and tell me. Just comment on YouTube. By the way, the comments have really uh, dropped off, which is unfortunate uh, but if you guys are listening or watching and comment, it just makes me feel good. It's like, yeah, it's awesome. Affirmations are always good. But uh, comment down there. I love to see it. Um, but here's a few different ideas. Now, we already talked about saving. That's kind of the big one, no matter what. If you can save, save. Even with some kind of winter hustle, save as much as you can. I get that. The downside to that is when you get to the end of the year, if you have a good tax person or you know, buying new equipment is a write-off for the next year. So what would you rather have? The money or the write-off? It's a tough one. You got to decide. Hopefully you have more than enough surplus that you can do both. Hopefully. But if not, here's some ideas. Now, first off, with the winter hustle, you have to understand that it can't pull your time and efforts away from your main business, which is window cleaning. So a lot of the stuff with easier schedules, I'm not saying go out there and get a job at um, Blockbuster. <laughs> it doesn't exist. But you know, don't go get a job somewhere. Um, that's not necessarily what I'm saying because now your time, and you have to give them your time, you have to give them your effort, right? But I'm saying oh, there's some of these other things is you can't pull your time away from what you have because no matter what other side hustle you do, there's still number one thing is this company that you have, window cleaning pressure washing, janitorial, whatever it is. That has to be your main focus because this is your empire. You're not going to need to do winter hustles. You may not even want to do winter hustles, but this is what you need to think about now. 
Now, if you get something completely different or you go back to school to be a doctor or something, well, that's pulling all of your time away from the window cleaning and you've just not done a side hustle. Now window cleaning is your side hustle, right? So you have to kind of focus on what it is that you're doing and hopefully it works well with your schedule. Because remember, you're still going to get jobs throughout the year, but either way, those are kind of them. Now, I know a lot of you guys and girls out there hate on route. Route, you don't make much money. I know. It's hard to build a route. It takes time to build a route. You don't make as much money, especially in the beginning when your route is super sporadic. I get that. But you know what it does do? It makes you money year round. Route saved me in my business in Wisconsin. Saved me. I love route for that exact reason. Now, do you make as much as a nice chunky house or big commercial property? No. But when you start building a route and you get tight on your route, meaning you do one, two, three, one, two, seven, one, two, four, you do all the addresses, boom, 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 boom. You can make some really, really good money. And by doing that, you can pay yourself through the winter. Now, if you have legal employees, which I hope you do, but then they go on layoff if you're doing winter layoffs, then you're the one doing the work in the winter, which you're not spending as much time on advertising, so you are freed up. And now every dollar you make is a dollar you keep. Kind of nice. Say you can do $65 an hour with your route. Now that's $65 an hour to pay for winter bills. Huh? It's pretty nice. Pretty nice. But it takes some time. And you should have really started doing that, like, you know, in spring and been selling every single day to try to get it up now. But it's not too late. You can go out there and sell that route. Get that route so that you can build it. It's all year round. Yes, it's going to mess up when you're busy on the rest of the stuff. It will maybe need to get another crew down the road, but route will get you through winter and is my number one. This isn't even a countdown, but my personally number one way to make money in the winter. Absolutely. And it's close. You're not losing sight of your company because you're just building another avenue of it. Route is it. Route is really it. The big thing with whatever you do though, remember your company has built trust. We've talked about trust and it's a boring topic. I know. But your company's built trust. That's why people hired you. Not because you look nice or because your shirts are nice or because you're... Like that might be the reason they called you in the first place, but they talked to you. They looked at your information. They decided, you know what? This is somebody I can trust. Once you do somebody for the first time and they like what you do, they know you're in their house. They allow you there. They You're in their castle. Now they trust you. And that's the biggest thing you can have in some business. I'll give you an example. This is, uh, I guess, a plug. Don't take it as a plug. but So I do sales, obviously, windowcleaner.com. That is my main gig, my only gig. And yes, I work a lot of hours, but that is my only way I make money is by selling equipment to you guys. Not that it costs you any extra, but I make a cut uh, for my commission side when I do sell stuff, which, by the way, high five to everybody who orders from me, guys, really really, really is awesome. But um, if I have trust with somebody, it's because I've earned the trust. Now, there are salespeople out there. We've all bought in a car from one of those high pressure. Hey, what are we going to do? You know, what's the best, what's the, what's the best water from pole? Well, it's this one. It's the gold deluxe super ultimate with the bells and whistles and chrome rims, right? I could do that, but then I ruin trust. Trust is more important because when somebody trusts you, they buy from you. So if you ever talk to me on the phone, sometimes people just want an answer. They say, hey, what's the best rubber? I can tell you what I think, but I'm not going to tell you what the best rubber is because it doesn't exist. Like you need to know what you want, right? I could tell you some of the equipment and it's not even going to be, especially in the water fed stuff. Guys are always want, hey, should I go this way? What do you do? I ask some questions. I go, you know what? I don't want to undersell you here, but I don't even think you need that. You don't need to go that crazy with what you have. And people are kind of, really? But you're a sales guy. Like you make commission. Don't you want to sell more? Well, if that's what you want, sure. But that's not what I want. I want to make sure you get the best equipment you possibly can. And that's trust. Trust isn't everything. Your spouse trusts you. Your kids trust you. Anything that you've earned the trust, trust is huge. When trust is broken, it cannot get brought back. It just can't. So that is huge. Having trust is like the dark side though. On all these customers, if customers trust you, you could sell them anything. You could sell them any service or anything that you do 
and you get their business because they trust you, right? The downside to that is you have to be careful because a lot of this stuff has to be something that they need because sales only work if you sell somebody something because they need it, because you know it's the best thing that they could do for their business or the best thing they could do for their house or the best thing that they could, if they want their windows clean, you know that dealing with your company is the best around. If you don't know that you have a huge problem, you're not gonna be able to sell if you don't think that you're the best at what you do. If you're not, and you don't think you're the best at what you do, figure out how to be the best at what you do. Because once you're committed and understand what you do and have and sell is the best that they could have, then it's very easy to let people know exactly what they need. I'm not being, saying being cocky. I'm saying understanding the value in what you sell. Everybody's got downsides too. But yeah, figure that out. That was a big old spiel on, on trust. But anyway, what I'm saying is, if you sell uh, you widgets, that's a made up word, but if you sell a widget, somebody's gonna buy it from you because they trust you, it better be a dang good widget because otherwise you're gonna lose all the trust, you're gonna crush everything else. So I'm jumping around. But that is trust. Trust is huge. Going back on what they trust about you is going back on and finding out what they need. Now, in the interview that we did uh, the other day, which you're never going to see because it was weirdly robotically pixelated in the audio. It sounded like Max Hedrum for some reason. Um, I was talking to uh, Adam, Sleeveless uh, Finance, and uh, he was mentioning to me that um, he does and has done something called um, uh, home care or uh, home watch. And what it is is that because there's snowbirds in his area, the people go out that because of some insurances and everything, he goes and people pay them to go to the house, go through the house, make sure everything's good every couple weeks to make sure that if something happens, if there's a little leak or a big leak or a something, it's caught. That is a need that I don't have where I was in Wisconsin. People just were stuck there. That was not, we didn't have any summer homes there, right? We didn't have any winter homes there, obviously. So in his area, that was a need. Now you need to find what people have in your area that's a need that you could then maybe do during the slow times or the winter time. Now you don't wanna do something all year round because again, it's taking the focus away, but that was a great thing we talked about. Again, you'll never see it, never. Uh, I still have it on my computer if anybody wants to watch the robot version. It's just the audio that's messed up, but it's bad. It's un unlistenable, unlistenable. We're gonna do another one with Adam though, so stay tuned to that, that'll be pretty cool. But that is a big one, uh, is finding out their needs. And some of the things that they need in winter areas is snow removal. Now, snow removal comes in at a second to route. I love snow removal and hate it at the same time. If you're in an area that gets snow, understand the fact that you are Mother Nature's whipping boy. Because it may not snow at all, and it may snow a lot. The other thing is, for you people who aren't in the snow, Snow stops falling around 2 a.m. Just what time? It's, yes, some snows go to 6. Most snows are done by 2. And you are out to the trucks or to the shop or everybody's meeting up, getting everything ready at 2 in the morning. And then you're plowing for the remainder of the night into the morning and usually doing at least 12 Hours. Yes, you could do eight hours, whatever you have schedule wise. I try to keep the trucks as close to eight hours as I can, but it's closer usually to 10 with fuel and food stops and peeing and all that stuff. Usually about 10 hours, but I try really hard to keep it at eight because there's nothing worse than doing eight hours in the middle of the night. You're tired, like you beat up, it's physical work, right? But doing that at 2 a.m., starting at 2 a.m., the next day after working eight hours, you're not going to do windows. Now, the nice thing is that if it snows, Usually people aren't going to be expecting their windows done that day, especially if homeowners, you can reschedule very easily. If it's route, um, you're going to be able to move them into whatever day it works that week anyway. By the way, if you're doing route, do it weekly, not uh, schedule. So don't say every f um, four weeks. I'm sorry, do it monthly, not weekly. So don't say every four weeks or every two weeks because it changes, right? Some months have four weeks, so it changes. Some weeks, some months have five weeks. So do it. Uh, every amount of weeks. So once a month would be four weeks uh, or two weeks. Don't do once a month, twice a month. Don't do that, right? Anyway, adds up, makes your schedule so much easier. But anyway, doing that allows you to um, take the customer list you have because the customer list is super valuable. Those are just a list of people who trust you. 
and selling those people now on snow removal. Hey, we'd love to do your driveway. It's $35. We'd be out there every time it's over an inch of snow. Every time it's over two inches of snow, whatever. We don't do contracts, blah, 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 whatever you want to do. You have to go stake if you're running a plow. It's nice to do that just so you know where stuff ends because once the snow falls, even if you've seen a house, you can't find the stuff a lot of times. Uh, hopefully your first snow is just a powder, get it figured out. Um, if you're going to be plowing, you need to have trucks that will allow you to do that. So you have to have bigger trucks, full size, at least vans won't work, obviously, unless you're just snow blowing, which is another one we'll talk about in a second. But if you're going to get a plow, try to get a 2,500 truck, at least those make plowing a lot easier. It sucks on gas a little bit the rest of the year, but it will make your winter that much easier. You'll be able to handle what you need to. But if you're running pickup trucks, you get blowers in the back and a plow in the front. You can do driveways, sidewalks, commercials, all that. Now, on the snowblower side, if you are doing all houses, you can do just snowblowers. Yeah, rip out snowblowers, put a couple of them in your truck, go into a driveway. It takes just about as long to do a snowblower on a driveway or two snowblowers on a driveway than it would to have one guy trying to plow because most of the time garages are at the end of there. You have to back drag. It doesn't turn out. It just... Trust me on this. Plowing is fun, sure, but uh, snowblowers make the job a lot easier. You can get monster snowblowers too. 46, 48 inch, like giant ones. So if you really want to, it's out there. But get snowblowers. It's an easy way to go in for maybe, uh, you know, $2,000. You can get some good snow equipment, uh, snowblowers and things, and you're up and running. You know, have a two stroke. Uh, uh, two-stage snowblower. Those are the big ones with the big slow-turning uh, augers in the front. You need at least one of those because you're going to have times where there's more snow and you have to get in through a driveway and those things cut through where a single stage is just like a flapper wheel goes fast. Uh, those don't do it. But anyway, maybe do snow removal if you're in an area. It's pretty cool, but it does impede a little bit in your normal schedule, but it doesn't take your focus away from what you're doing. You have the trucks, you have the clients, you have the trust. Why not do something like snow removal with it? And you make some money. Now the downside is that some years you have no snow, other years you get tons of snow, you can't pick and choose. So it's hard, especially if you're relying on snow to do anything. That's where salting comes into play. Salting is done way more than snow removal is done. Salting is paired with snow removal. But salting, now you need a uh, tailgate salter if you're doing big parking lots and then houses. You gotta have the salt, you gotta store the salt. Salting is done even when it doesn't snow. So if there's ice, it's it's gotta be done. So do salting also and you'll say the downside with that is your trucks are already getting wrecked from salt and driving it. Now you're throwing salt down. Wash your trucks regularly. It's so expensive to just get trucks destroyed when you can just wash them regularly. <sighs> but that's snow. I have a love-hate relationship with snow. We did uh, one. The longest I've ever sat in a truck was 66 hours. I would just pick up crews of people, drop them off, pick them up, drop them off. I just kept picking up half the crew, dropping them off, picking up the other half, and just going back and forth. Run, run truck because you couldn't even get through the streets. It was just giant, giant blizzard, and uh, I still have nightmares. But anyway, that's snow. That's snow for you. Think about it. I, I do kind of dig snow. It's nice to at least have a big chunk of money, you know? Every time you go out, too, depending on your list, say you get a couple thousand dollars. If it snows four times in a month, that's a nice little uh, chunk. But you got to have the staff for that, you know? Um, But but that's it. And you got to plan for that. It's, if you're going to advertise, start advertising like yesterday for that. Uh, get people set up on that. Um. Other than the snow and the route staying kind of close, you can also do Christmas lights. Now, um, I know there are a lot of other religions that are in this group that uh, don't necessarily celebrate Christmas, and that's cool. Fine. If, you know, there was house decorating for Yom Kippur, I'd do that. I'm completely okay with doing Christmas lights regardless. It's it's something that you can do and make great money at. If not, go back and watch the Nation episode on Christmas lights. Uh, that was with Josh Trees. Who we're trying to do another one this year with, uh, but he's super busy this time of year. But it's great. It's another way to add on work. You're doing the work when things start to slow down. 
Uh, by the way, it is October right now, and I have houses in my neighborhood that got their Christmas lights put on by professional companies already because that's how far out their schedule is. Pretty interesting, right? And then, now you're charging for setup, takedown, the light rental. You're charging for all that. But the takedown, you're actually not taking anything down until January. January is a great time to have to do that because you're slow anyway. You've already made the money to do it. So now you're doing the work, you're filling up your January. It's a really kind of nice pairing for what we're doing. The downside is it's starting to get saturated. You're starting to see a lot of companies do professional lighting. Doesn't mean, I would never ever say that a saturated market uh, will not allow you to do it because now you have to find your niche, why people should buy from you. But it's something to think about. And it's another thing you need to, you need to start advertising for it a while ago. So if you're thinking about do that, start, send out something this week to your customers and say, hey, we're doing Christmas lights installation. I would love to give you an estimate just to see where you're at. Do a lot of estimates, do a lot of research. It's a super, super good, it, timing works, the money works. The only downside to it other than the saturation is the storage of lights. If you're going that route, there's a couple ways to do it. You can lease out the lights every year or they can be their property, but you provide the lights and then they keep them. It's up to you. It's up to you and how you want to do it, but check a bunch of different things. There's a lot of window cleaners out there that do that too. So if you want, uh, throw it up in a forum. Just search in the Facebook group Pro Window Cleaning. You're going to see a lot of them. I know Dave Handcuff does it, a bunch of other guys who are very big into it. Definitely worth checking out, and uh, everybody I've talked to really loves it. So, something to do. I never got into it personally, uh, not on the professional side of it, but um, yeah, pretty pretty cool. Uh, and then finally is the um, ways you can make a winter hustle money that don't involve the company you have now, and that's Uber and Lyft. And I know, I know, right now you're like, well, that's not even part of our genre i know now you can't use your work truck i mean that would dial down what you're trying to accomplish like you're trying to be a professional company don't go pick somebody up in your work truck right because it just doesn't look good even though people don't understand they're not buying you maybe you need to make some money in the winter use a spouse's vehicle have her or him drive your work truck around while you drive their personal vehicle around and maybe you ride for uber that's another one doesn't impede. You can be on or off as much or as little as you want. Maybe you're in a college town. Maybe you're by an airport. There's a lot of people who make good side hustle, not just the people who make the, the main income. So maybe that helps you get through the winter. Now, all this stuff, again, may not be something you need once you're established. Maybe you'll be rocking and rolling, making so much money that you can sit, you know, twiddling your thumbs on a beach. And I know a lot of guys who do shutdown. And that's cool, too. Do it however you want, but it's something to think about. It is basically free to drive for Uber Lyft. Maybe you drive for one, maybe you drive for both. Look into it. It is something, if you got a clean record and a nice car, it's something that you can make some money on. And more money in the wintertime just helps you get through. Um, now remember, don't choose Uber or Lyft over, say, Route or something that builds your company up. And don't choose Uber or Lyft over getting your advertising stuff ready when it gets closer to spring. Like there's still things you have to do for your main company. So don't let you lose sight of that by doing winter hustles. But they're nice. It's nice to make money, you know. But either way, I want to plead to you one more time that I want to be your rep, your sales rep, your dude that you know, the person you call or text. I got guys who just text me and be like, yo. I need some towels. That's all they text me. I got all the rest of their information and it's I'm, cool. It's on its way. I send it out. Wouldn't that be nice if you have? How we normally start it though is you like to shop, go online, put everything in your cart, make sure that you're logged in because that'll save it. And then just shoot me a text that night, that morning um, and say, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Here's the code. My address is the same and my card ends in one, two, three, four. That's it. Boom. That's everything. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you so much. It's like a virtual high five. It really means a lot, guys. Uh, very, very much. My number direct is 862-312-2026. 862-312-2026. I want you to be my customer, my client. I want you to be a VIP. So please do that. 
big or little, all of your orders would be epic. Um, and uh, this week's code is going to be hustle. If you tell me that code, hustle, I will give you 5% off your order, but you have to order through me. Don't be, I don't even know the guy's name, I'm not gonna put it out there, but this jerky dude who was like, I put an order in, give me that code. I said, that's not how it works. You gotta order through me, because I can't. If you put it in regularly, it doesn't affect me at all, right? You gotta give it to me. No, I don't, you didn't follow directions. So please don't be that guy. Don't be rude to me. I don't need to be rude. Be rude too. But anyway, yeah, let me know. That's the end of the spiel. It's the end of the spiel. It's my second time recording this, I'm sorry. But uh, either way, go out there and if you need a side hustle, find one of the side hustles that you really like. More importantly, have me as your rep. I wanna be your rep. Even if you text me and say, yo, what's up? Every nice thing that anybody ever says to me, I write it down in a journal, book, just so I can look back and just see that I'm making an impact on people's lives. It really means a lot to me, so thank you. Um, but either way, go out there and until next week, be epic.